Welcome to module five on STPF. We've gotten a lot of interest on this. I think it will be really exciting and we have a lot of uh, great speakers today um, who have been fellows in different settings and really grateful to Cynthia here as well. Um, so up next is Teresa Stoffler, who is the executive director of the Inter Academy Partnership and a senior program officer at the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine. And she previously was a AAAS fellow at the United States Geological Survey. So Teresa, I'll hand it over to you. I also want to echo a number of points that were made, um, including from Marguerite, who said, you all are really ahead of the game. Because I also just like wasn't thinking about these things so much um, when I was in grad school. Um, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't want to stay in academia, but I just wasn't aware of like what the other options were. And I think that's one of the best things um, that comes from the fellowship is just opening your eyes to the many opportunities, whether you stay in your agency, you go somewhere else, you work at a nonprofit, you just really get exposed to all of the different options. Um, and it's not so scary uh to realize that, like all the many things you can do so um i i really loved research actually and sometimes i miss it um to be honest but i i also wanted to look more broadly at how science could serve society and how i could be part of that um so that's kind of what drew me to science policy um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about my fellowship and then how I think that that basically helped me get my position now at the National Academies. Um, and so I'm working in the space of science diplomacy, which I'll talk about, and then science advice for policy, like advising um, on policy at different levels. So I was trained as an ecologist and I was placed at US Geological Survey um, which is interesting because it is a place where that's filled with scientists, unlike many of the agencies where um, others are placed in, but they're mostly geologists. So they were like, oh, you're an ecologist. Okay, so uh, still kind of an outsider there. Um, but it was a really good experience. Um, we were actually working on how to create a standing capacity for scientists to help advise during times of crisis, um, a mechanism that would be super useful right now if it was still uh, kind of activated. Um, but basically this came out of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill when they realized that um, government officials were kind of scrambling to find the appropriate scientific expertise to help them figure out what to do. So we are trying to kind of like formalize and standardize that process um, in Department of Interior and hopefully for the government more, more broadly. Because I was a, actually hired as a federal employee, um, which some agencies do, I think NIH does that, some others, but many, um, you're kind of like a contractor. But because I was a federal employee, I was able to basically do a detail during my fellowship where I was placed in the Department of Interior headquarters in the international office. That was super exciting for me because we were working directly under Secretary Jewell, um, Secretary at the time for Interior, on her international engagement, which was really strong at that time, like in wildlife trafficking, climate change, transboundary um, resource management. And we were kind of like writing her briefings for all of these issues in a super fast paced environment. So that was great. I did that for four months. Um, but really during the fellowship, one of the things for me um, that was uh, stayed with me, I guess, and led to my position was actually my group, my work with the affinity groups. Um, so it was mentioned that there's these fellow organized groups called affinity groups where you can kind of self organize and work on issues um, that you're interested in. And this was a really important leadership experience for me. So I was a chair for the science diplomacy affinity group. And so we would organize events um, around science diplomacy. And by the way, when I say science diplomacy, 
um, there's different definitions, but I think of it as harnessing the diplomatic benefits of international science cooperation. So with certain countries, the US might be unable to work with them in you know, typical political channels, but through science that might create an entry point um, to work together in a really positive way. And this idea really captivated me and I wanted to, to, to figure out how to work more on this. So um, again, so echoing some of the ideas, um, AAAS pr uh, provides this amazing platform and this amazing network of people and you just um, write to people and you're like, I'm a AAAS fellow and I'm organizing this workshop and they're like, yes, I'll do it. And so um, that was great. And we actually had some awesome events, including with like the ambassador to, um, of Cuba to the United States. So at that time, uh, the US under the previous administration was trying to normalize relationships with relations with Cuba. And so we had a panel on like science diplomacy opportunities and challenges with Cuba, just as an example. Um, and through this, through doing these events, which were and running this group, which was like on the side of my true fellowship work, but I really met a lot of key people working in this space. And um, when I would hold these events, uh, basically my future employers would see them and like they attended them. So then I actually um, got a position at the National Academies um, of Science, which is a nonprofit private institution that helps advise the US government on science issues. But I'm working in the international part of the National Academies. So um, in my role, I'm also a program officer. So I manage a bilateral grant program that allows American scientists to um, do research with Pakistani scientists. And we also have a similar program between the US and Egypt, um, which is pretty unique. So that's exciting. Um, and then, uh, so I went there right after my fellowship um, ended in 2016 and I've been there since. And since then, um, my responsibilities have grown to also include management of an oversight of this network of academies of science around the world. So I work with our counterpart organizations in um, 140 countries and this network also provides science advice either to their own national governments or in some cases to international organizations like the United Nations. Um, so I think, um, you know, science diplomacy, there's not really a set career path and you're not like a science diplomat. It's, there's not a very clear way necessarily um, to, to do that. So I was really excited to get this position at the Academy is working directly in science diplomacy um, efforts. And I think for sure I can link it directly to my fellowship experience. Um, but I just want to make one final point because we're all talking about how amazing the fellowship is and it really was for me, it was a pivotal experience. But I also have a lot of colleagues that were able to break in from science into science policy without the fellowship. So if you don't get it, apply again, but if you still don't get it, um, don't think it's the end of the world. You can still uh, make strides and break into science policy. So thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you, Teresa. I'm really glad you mentioned affinity groups because that's also been one of my favorite ways to connect with fellows with similar interests. I work in health policy across a ton of different agencies. It's, it's been a really big strength of the strength of the fellowship for me.